Well, I I couldn't agree more. I think it's absolutely a toss up between the two of them. We're going to take a short break and we will be back in just about a minute with the start of the match. Don't go anywhere. Grand finals starting soon. at the end of this one. If they all hold through the one-thirds here, it's four-way full combo for P-Model, and they managed to pull it off. Great team school. The nation, man, they have such good hidden players. Just not enough. This team is way too strong in this sort of thing. Five maps they've lost so far. Honestly, pretty ridiculous. Welcome back, everyone, to the Grand Finals of the Perennial. It's finally time for the last match of the tournament. You already know it's between the Tribe and the Nation, the team undefeated throughout the tournament who have lost five maps the entire way through, have taken down every opponent in front of them, but have not yet met the Nation in the Perennial so far. And the Nation, after the 7-0 sweep against P-Model yesterday, looking to defy the expectations set in that semifinals match and come out on top through the bracket reset. My name is Dio. I'm the host of the Perennial, and I'm one of your casters for this matchup between our two strongest teams in the tournament. I'm joined by Doomsday and Demarsh for what we are sure is going to be an exciting bout. Only one of these two teams could take the gold. And you look at the names, you look at the run these two teams have had. The Tribe have destroyed all before them. The nation have had to dig deep. They've had to have some pretty tough moments. They've had to had to look at themselves after that loss in the semis, but they have pulled through. And now at this point, who do you put your money on? I have no idea. I can't wait for this. This is going to be fantastic. No, these teams, they are just so incredible to watch in every match throughout this tournament like you mentioned the semi-finals the nation they they did lose but they weren't fully prepared we saw with the the losers bracket grand finals yesterday what they're like when they're fully prepared and it is a scary sight to behold but the tribe they've been on a winning streak why stop here why not go all the way so it's gonna be so exciting to watch i just cannot wait yeah, yeah i feel these... like the tribe now nah, go on dear uh, these are just two star-studded rosters. I mean, you compare yeah. the lineups for these two, and it, it really is completely a toss-up. We were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, the raw skill cap versus the preparation from the nation, but really looking across the board, you have to say the raw skill cap is there for both of them. And in grand finals, if you're not doing your prep work, then what are you even doing? Both of these teams are going to come into this prepared and ready to go for this map pool and for this match. There's a little bit of information for the Tribe. Seven maps played yesterday, but clean sweep from the nation doesn't give them too much to go off either. And they held back as well on a few of their 
you know, the, the picks that they've known to be good at. So they've done a good job at hiding as much information as they could. That's the best case scenario for the nation going into this bout. So now to see what their game plan is, what have they got lined up? And I guarantee that they have this lined up properly, timed out. No way they left anything to chance against the tribe here. Yeah, I, I really don't think there should be anything left to chance in this matchup. We talked about some potential power picks in the Nomad 3 through Nomad 6 really pool for both of these teams. We talked about Hidden 1 and Hard Rock 1 as potential picks where both of these teams are very, very strong on those raw mechanics and aim. We talked about Double Time 1, the speed aim being something that both of these teams are very good at. And I honestly think we're going to have to go deep into this map pool to decide a winner here in the Grand Finals. We're likely going to see a lot of these maps get picked up. It is second pick chosen for the nation, second ban chosen for the tribe. So second ban and first pick for the tribe, first ban, second pick for the nation here. The ban rules, of course, a little bit different in the perennial. They do one ban at the start of the match and each team's second ban after four maps have been played. So there is some room for adjustment, but at this level, with both of these teams, with all the prep work they've done, they should know exactly what they're picking into right now. Will we see the same ban then? Last time they banned the uh, Hidden 2, Marmalade Butcher. Uh, I'm going to leave that one to you, Dio. You've got that down pat, but... <laughs> yeah, Flux, <laughs> Flux announced any Hillipilification, uh, hey. custom map by Devious Panda for this tournament. Uh, it's it's a really difficult map, actually. The spacing and the cuts throughout it are all very, very tricky, and it never stops. I mean, the overall difficulty in it, the overall requirement never really slows down because that's the song that it is mapped to as well. It just does not stop. You've got some tricky slider aim in there as well, and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it banned out against a team like the Tribe, who have been so good on the flow aim and specifically the hidden streams throughout the tournament, top scores on Hidden 2 in multiple map pools for the Tribe. Well, there's some discussions going on. No instant ban here. But I would agree with you, it would be a pretty decent ban, but with the raw skill of the Tribe, maybe other areas. Nope. Nope, they are sticking to their guns and it is gone once again. Uh, commiserations to Devious Panda. The map's oh. too good at what it tests. The tribe, too good at that skill, and the nation are gonna take it out of there. But unlucky, uh, unlucky really, that this is the matchup for which it was mapped uh, with the nation. I think pretty well having a, a disadvantage on that sort of map. Clearly not wanting to deal with it against the tribe. Damn. Hey, there's still plenty of other cool customs which we've yet to see. And, I mean, we, there's a few more in Nomad there. Let's see what the tribe ban, though. And it looks like they are going to be targeting something that the nation played yesterday there. The hidden one's gone, which is really interesting. I thought that might be quite a quite good fight, but I guess the tribe don't want to chance that. Yeah, that's very interesting to me. Hidden One is a map where I believe Flying Tuna has the current number one score and Badu has the current number two score. So they've both got lineups for that map, for sure. Uh, but the Tribe say, no, we're not going to leave that one to chance. We've got better maps that we think we can do you know, even better on and create a bigger score difference on. And one of them is Double Time 2 Libertas picked up here by the Tribe as their first pick. The, uh, the more control-focused Double Time pick this. Approach rate 10.3, so it's pretty high, but comfortable for the lineups these two teams to put forward here 240 bpm but focused on essentially light tech patterns at a very high speed for this sort of map lots and lots of bursts on different numbers odds and evens and plenty of slider patterns as well you have to deal with on a fairly long length as well just under three minutes i believe or around about three minutes drain time 
I mean, this is just a tech map, but with double time applied to it. I mean, <laughs> there's yeah. not there's not a lot else to say about it. But when you talk about tech, it's such a, a wide range of different things that you do still have to specify. But this is really focused around that finger control, like Doom said, the transitions between even and odd numbered bursts, a lot of the slider patterns, a lot of the cut streams in this as well are very, very tricky when you rate up an AR9 map with double time. It becomes that AR10.3 as well. Only 240 BPM, it's dense enough, but there is still a lot of reading strain in a map like this that forces you to be, quite frankly, a master of that approach rate and of double time as a mod. And this lineup for the Tribe, I think, pretty well fits that bill. Vaxe, Mappy, Flying Tuna, and Tommy going in as their four-player lineup. We're waiting on one more to come in for the nation with Eris and Apraxia, and I'm a fancy lad as their current three. This is one of the maps where you have your players like Vaxe and Mathy, of course, obviously can do well on, but in the context of this pool, it is one where, because it's pushing hard in a one of the more sort of specific skill sets, right? Just double time, high approach rate tech, basically. There's a lot of room for the higher skill cap players to really flex on a map like this in a one try situation. So the tribe definitely pushing on their higher skill ceiling when it comes to things like this here to start us off. I wouldn't count the nation out though. Arison makes an appearance for this one. Not too surprised to see him there. Very accomplished tech player as well as speed player. So you mash those two up and he is the ideal candidate for a map like this. Not to mention, of course, Bartek, Fancy Lad and Apraxia, who are all very solid on maps like this. Especially players like Fancy Lad and Apraxia as well. Should be very solid on a map like this. Yeah, I can absolutely agree. I mean, we, we talked about it a lot before the match started in the pre-match show, but these are two rosters where you compare the four players on any map at all in this map pool and you think, yeah, either of these teams can come out on top. The pedigree that they have as players throughout this game, and particularly in tournaments, is unmatched with any other roster. And that's why they're here in Grand Finals. Early miss for Praxi over on the side of the nation, but everybody else holding on to the combo through the intro section. Yeah, and a really, really good start. We see a double break there coming in from Fantasyland and Apraxia, though. So it really shifts things about for the nation early on. Four members of the tribe still wanting really nice combo, though. There goes Bartek. There goes Utami. Not the start. But I think the nation won. No, definitely not the start that the nation would have wanted. Matthew there finding a slider burn for the tribe is going to help them get back on their feet a little bit. The early combo breaks for the nation actually means their supporting scores are pretty good right now, but Apraxia finding that miss is not going to help for sure. Vaxi Flying Tuna still holding on to the FCs against only Arison for the nation right now, holding on to the sole full combo for them here on DT2. Flying Tuna drops the combo though, going into this streamier section. It's just Vaxay versus Arison on the full combos, but look at the supporting combos from Bartek and Tuna. Uh, Fancy, excuse me. Both of them higher supporting combos than anyone on the side of the tribe. Yeah, they're hopefully going to try and pull back some of this score gap. And, you know, it isn't that significant, so they've definitely got the time to do it. It's quite a long map here. Break there from Mathy and Flying Tuna as well. So Nation do have control of this map right now but they've got to hold these combos there goes fancy that's really not going to help them and arison as well that's a huge drop for the nation Vaxi is still holding on to this full combo the score lead is slowly going back in the favor of the tribe bartek is now the only one holding combo for the nation as apraxia drops and bartek follows shortly afterward Vaxi here pulling off but is still the full combo three quarters of the way through. Mathy holding combo as Vaxe drops as well means that it's going to stay on the side of the tribe even when Vaxe can't complete the FC. The rest of the team is still there with that bit of supporting score, supporting combo needed to keep this on the side of the tribe as their first pick. Oh yeah, it's looking really good with the supporting combo from Mathy coming towards the end of this map. There's nothing the nation can do. They're starting to build those supporting combos back up, but the double, uh, actually, team break coming in from the nation is just going to end this one. The tribe have got away with their first point, but not significantly. It was looking a bit scary there. 
It definitely was. That score lead on the side of the nation at the start of this map was incredibly scary. It was just Vaxe holding, pulling off nearly 800,000 on that first pick for the nation that actually kept it and cinched the win for them. Mappy as well can't be understated. That 613k almost matching the highest score from Arison over on the side of the nation. That's really where that score lead came from because they're two low scores for the tribe. Uh, matching or below the two low scores for the nation. So those high scores popping off. And that's the kind of thing you expect from Vaxe on this team for the Tribe. You talk about who is one of or the best tournament players of all time, and Vaxe has to be in that conversation. I think that's going to be a recurring theme in this game. At this level, Vaxe... Pound for pound, Vaxe is the player you want here. I think that goes without saying. And especially when it comes to that sort of DT map is where he can really flex. And he did so there. But when that, you know, the tribe can flex on stuff like that. But I think the nation can flex on things like this. And I'm almost surprised this was left open. This yeah. is a low approach rate hidden. <laughs> it's, it's not that low. It's only our 7.3. No, this is a... Uh... This map, when it comes to the reading, is just absolutely brutal. The overlapping cut streams on AR 7.3 in this map are just absolutely disgusting to try and read if you are not a dedicated low approach rate hidden player. And I think, uh, I think everyone on the nation, their hidden squad, is some of the best low approach rate reading players that you can have in for a map like this. So. Very, very strong pick for them, and I, I agree, it's almost a little surprising that it was left open, but clearly the Shrine of not wanting uh, that hidden one to come out instead. Yeah, the Nation have been the strongest low approach rate hidden player. You know, hidden three, it's been their map throughout this tournament as like a staple. They've gone for it very early, almost every game, whenever it's been open, and they've, they have the strongest four for it. And of course, there's no exception here, especially once that approach rate starts getting below eight, the specialist players start becoming much more valuable. And with Badoo on the team, that definitely comes into the floor. Uh, hopefully he's here, because without him, that's going to be kind of nasty. But as a four, the nation have a terrifying AR8 roster. And I imagine it will translate to something like this with proper preparation, because this map you do need to practice, and they have certainly done that. Yeah, not practicing something like this is absolutely a nail in the coffin sort of situation. Um, there, even while we were watching the replay for it from Woei during the map pool showcase, even the replay for it is hard to follow sometimes. So it very much is a map that if you are not well practiced on it, if you do not take the time to learn this, you are going to fumble. But Bartek, Fancy Lad, Aryu, and Badiou in on this for the nation. Zaxe, Utami, Flying Tuna, and Arnold in on this for the tribe. Talk about low approach rate reading players. Mm. People who are just incredibly strong on the hidden as a mod in general. And so many of these names just crop up in regular conversation. Badiou and Arnold in particular, I think, are some of the most well-known low approach rate reading players in tournaments right now. Arnold, of course, a former old map fantasy champion who is very, very familiar with these types of low approach rate maps and Badu, uh, an easy player in solo. So very, very comfortable on something, even AR7. These two rosters are fantastic for a map like this, but will the AR7 play a role here? It's so hard to be consistent on this. Already see a couple of breaks come out. Vaxe, Flying Tuna, and Fancy Lad are missing at the start of this one. Everybody else holding on to the combo for now. Vaxe and Tuna struggling a little bit on this. Utami as well, dropping a few misses on one of these streams. Are you dropping on the side of the nation? It is Bartek, Padu, and Arnold still holding on to the combos right now. Yeah, really struggling to adjust to this map, I think. This was costing them. There goes Arnold, the last full combo for the tribe. We've only seen, well, we've actually seen breaks from Fancy, Bartek, and Ayu, but, I mean, has the damage already been done? There's, oh, there goes Badu, the last full combo for the nation. No full combos remaining. Utami has the highest combo, actually, going through this. 
yeah, it's better supporting scores right now for the Tribe. Like you said, Utami with that highest combo at the moment. Tuna and Arnold matching those other combos on the side of the nation, and Baxay matching the combo from Badu. Tuna misses on one of the slower sections, though, so... Score lead now a little bit more in the favor of the nation than before. Vaxay missing as well, so... This slow section trickier than it looks for sure. Some of these parts of the map are just deceptively hard, even though it looks like it's very simple. Yeah, I imagine the CS5 AR7 sort of tricky combination is really playing havoc with the, the reading elements of this. As we see, Utami, Ayu, and Badu all finding breaks. Vaxay really struggling with this map. As we see a break from Fancy, Flying Tuna does follow as well. So the big combos are Arnold and Bartek at the moment. But it's... In this last quarter, I can't see a way for the nation to really claw back that nearly 300k score gap. Yeah, at this point, the you know, 250k almost score lead that has been a mask for the nation is very, very strong up against the tribe. Bartek and Fancy both break. Are you dropped some chain misses, but Arnold drops some misses as well. And at this point, we're at the end of the map. That is a successful first pick for both of our teams here at the start of the Grand Finals, tied up one-to-one, -one, each team just winning their own first picks. Yeah, that was going to be so hard. Even if Arnold, I think, had managed to hold on to that combo at the end, I still don't think it would have been enough. He needed the supporting combo uh, from his teammates, and unfortunately, there was it just wasn't quite there. Can I have a say something about Utami? Because I don't think enough people talk about Utami's low approach rate ability. That was a good score from Utami. I just want to point that out. Utami's good at that low AR, regardless of all the other skills he has. Yeah, he, he very much is. I mean, the second highest score on the side of the tribe was Utami. He had 450k, higher than Badu's score, actually, on that map. So, Utami is very, very good at that low approach rate, and I expect Arnold and Utami to be in on the hidden when we get to free mod 2. Not if, but when we get to that map, because you know if they're first picking, putting Funfair, they're probably leaning into Metamorphose afterwards, but it's the tribe's second pick for now. Gravesinger by Shadow of Intent, our no mod 2 stream map in this pool. This is one we saw yesterday. Uh, the nation did play this one. Um, had a couple decent scores on it. But I think the tribe, with you know some of their highest skill cap players in a map like this, should be looking at it as a, a winnable point. And picking it early tells me that. Uh, of course, once again, this map is all about 200 BPM streams. It has lower spacing, but very squiggly, curvy ones that take a lot of corners and have a lot of spacing, acceleration and deceleration, as well as comfortable, but very widely spaced streams you know the, the pp stream at 7.7 .7 stars so you have those more control aim control heavy ones as well as the pure super spaced ones that a lot of these players will be used to playing in solo yeah those transitions between some of the more control focused streams and some of the super high spacing streams is a really really difficult point of focus in this map the sudden acceleration that you can get when those vocals just start going off is a very, very difficult adjustment to make. And we saw yesterday in the Nation versus P model where a lot of those players had chain misses happen because of that adjustment, because of not being able to properly deal with exactly how quickly that spacing changed. So players need to be on their toes for that in this one. Vaxay, Rect Rectigon, aka Swaggy Swagster, intercambing Arnold, in for the tribe on their second pick, BTMC, Arison, Bartek, and Fancy Lad in for the nation on Noma 2. No, I think a lot of people are excited to see this match. I think there's a, there, as uh, BTMC mentioned yesterday, a bit of a rivalry going on between him and Rectagon uh, on the side of the, the nation and the tribe, respectively. So, this is one of the maps that they were hoping to compete on, and it's nice to see that we, you know, potentially get to see that battle between them. But early on, it's actually the tribe that have got that slight lead. A bit of accuracy drop coming in from Arison and Bartek to start us off. Yeah, our 
Charlie misses from Bartek once again over on the side of the nation here. Everybody else holding on to the full combos though, so good starts for both teams. Of course, the nation not quite starting off exactly how they'd want, but definitely the start that the tribe wants here. Above 99 accuracy for every player in the lobby as well on their side. Harrison dropping some misses. It's BTMC and Fancy Lad still holding on to the full combos for the nation as we start to get into the first longer, highly spaced stream section. Yeah, we talk about that confidence. The, the, the tribe is seen to show it on this map. And they're looking really good as Bartek finds another break. No recovery for him. But all four combos. There goes BTMC as well. Fancy's the only one left. Oh, he goes as well on this really tricky spacing section. And we see Swaggy Spice that also known as Rectagon, Arnold, and Intercamming all drop their combos. And there goes Vax in the last one. But look at the damage that was done. 250k in the lead for the tribe after that section. And even with Vaxi missing at the end there, the team for the Tribe held long enough to amass what is a pretty substantial score lead actually at the halfway point of the map. Yeah, they've established that score gap and it's going to take a massive team effort to bring it back. We see a break coming in from Bartek there. Isn't going to help the nation into camping goes though, so a bit of a trade up. So these teams try and recover those combos. And it's a slight combo lead right now for the nation, but the driver's still holding a lot of big combos, and the accuracy in particular is very much helping them at the moment. Fancy Lad drops. BTMC drops, Arnold drops as well, so three combos drop, two of them on the side of the nation right now. Going into the next super space section, Arison drops the combo, Bartek drops as well, but Rectagon, Vaxay, and Intercambing all hold for the tribe. That is some ridiculous flow aim coming out of the tribe here, able to hold onto their combos even through that highly spaced section. So looking not only more consistent in the first half, but able to actually combo through that high spacing section right before the end of the map, and that is 100% going to be the win for them here on Gravesinger. Yeah, no doubt. Look at that 1000 combo coming out from Vaxi and Rectagon, as well as the supporting combo from Intercamping. Two of them do drop. Drops all across the board for the tribe. BTMC actually the only one sort of holding through this difficult spacing section to the end, but it's just too little too late for the nation. The tribe get the point in very substantial fashion. I think that might have been a Bancho bug on Vaxi's screen, by the way. Uh, his score is showing eight misses. That was very clearly more than eight misses if you uh, were looking at the note lock that we saw on screen. And even in the multiplayer link, it shows eight misses as well. So I think that was a, uh, a Bancho incident, as we call them. He, he uh, did only have single digit miscount on that map which is kind of ridiculous that is nuts. on a map like that. Yeah, that is sort of incredible. I think the 99% is even more impressive on that. So just incredible consistency on those wide streams, because if you miss one of those, it's impossible to get anywhere close to 99. So incredible consistency on those very widely spaced sections there from Vax there. Worked out really well, pushing there higher skill ceiling working well so far and a few more maps they could do that on too for their picks so I imagine they'll keep doing that I think that Nomad 2 pick just makes so much sense after the hidden 2 ban from the nation um, you know those two maps yes the spacing on Gravesinger is much higher and it presents itself much differently but at the end of the day both of them are still street aim maps so if they ban out one against you you're likely to win the other and it definitely worked out in the favor of the tribe there. Very big score difference. I think actually the biggest raw score difference that we've had so far in this matchup, 500k in their favor. Now, with the nation getting the next pick, did they go straight into more low AR, go into Metamorphose, which is another low AR free mod pick, or something they've been doing a lot recently as well is going into the Nomad 3, but nope. No, they are going to stick to their guns on the, the low approach rate.
They're definitely going to stick with the low approach rate here. It's free mod 2. We were talking about it in the pre-match show. We were talking about it as a potential pick after Hidden 3, and they lean into it once again. Metamorphose. He occupies modification difficulty. AR 8.5 and CS 4.8. It looks a little lopsided on paper, but when you see the patterning in this one, it does not seem lopsided whatsoever. This map is so, so difficult to read on Hidden yeah, even though it isn't full-on CS5, AR8, the map and its patterning, very irregular patterning and mild tech patterns make up for that. The circle size is small enough to make the precision required for some of these low BPM streams in very tough shapes. Quite hard to aim. And the AR8.5, even though on a normal map, it's all gravy for these players, but on a map like this, it really does add a massive amount of density and aim control. It's low enough that anything lower than that gets quite ridiculous, even above this level. As well, I should mention as well, uh, thank you very much for Yolk's Pie, who uh, made a few edits for this tournament. The original map had different difficulty settings, but he was gracious enough to add a few edits to how we wanted it to be, so shout outs. Yeah, it's. We were, we were looking at a couple of clips from this from yesterday for the nation. This is obviously a map that they want to be picking into again. But a, a map that is this hard to read on it and, and is, you know, CS6 on Hard Rock. Very, very tricky in terms of the slider shapes, the slider aim, the cut streams, the finger control in this. It's a slider tech map, but at, uh, at this metadata, and it just is, it really is that hard that even in free mod, we didn't want to make it AR8. It's just so, so difficult to deal with. If I had my way, dude, making him play this <laughs> AR8, but we have to be nice to the players, you see. That's an easy from Arnold. Wait, oh my what? God. Oh my God, I love Wait, him. Wait, Arnold's going crazy uh, on this? Oh no. I love Arnold. Oh, oh, we're in for a treat. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right, so this is, uh... You know, you talk about players who uh, are good at the easy modification in solo. We mentioned Badu, but we didn't mention Arnold. Uh, OMF champion, very, very clearly comfortable on very, very low approach rate. Plays the easy in solo. Played it for practice for this one, I'm sure. And we really didn't expect anyone to be going easy on this, but proven wrong, we are. Arnold taking the easy. Early misses for Vaxa, early misses for Flying Tuna, and Badu on both teams. So a couple early misses going into the first TI time. Fancy Lad dropping on the Hard Rock as well for the nation now. But two full combos to two. Yeah, I think what's amazing as well is Arnold is still holding. So he's not just comfortable on it, he's putting in a really good score here as we see Bartek finding a break. He and was Utami holding the highest combo, but Utami does break. Arnold is holding the highest combo on an easy modifier on the grand finals pool. I mean, what, what, a, what a showing. Yeah, this is this is not easy favor. Like we did not expect anyone to take easy on this map at all. And for for chat's purpose, by the way, we have an easy multiplier in this tournament. You have to multiply Arnold's score by 1.6, so he's already up above 300k as a raw score. That lead for the tribe is actually close to a 100k lead in their favor. Breaks, however, from multiple people across both teams. Fancy lad. Bartek holding, Arnold actually dropping the combo as we say that, so this lead has the potential to go back over to the side of the nation, but there has to be combo help from their players. And this, this is getting, this is really close right now. Uh, we see good supporting combos, you know, Tommy and Vaxe all were holding good combos. Bartek had a big combo but drops it. There goes you, Tommy. I think the nation might just edge this out. They, they've still got to work to the very last second of this map. That should be enough, though, surely. I don't think it is. Arnold's score is probably above that 400k mark, and 
that is less than 100,000 raw score in the favor of the nation, I, I think that's actually more than enough to put it in the favor of the tribe. That should be three to one here after the easy multiplier. That is a custom tournament rule, by the way. We have a 1.6 times multiplier for easy in-game. It is a 0.5 times multiplier. So if you SS a map with easy in this tournament, it's 800,000 score rather than 1 million score, like with no mods. Uh, and Arnold making use of that, I, I think that's more than enough to actually put them over the finish line for the tribe. It should be three to one after that. That is not an easy map. Arnold, you're a legend. That's crazy. Also as well, uh, Vaxay got like a very low miscount on Hard Rock and that is incredible as well because this map is tough on that Hard Rock and uh, yeah, both of those scores on the Tribe. Very, very good. I was not expecting an easy. That was This is the last map I was expecting to easy. I thought we'd see flying out to the sky easy before that. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is just that uh, unexpected for us, honestly. Uh, and by the way, if you do the uh, if you do the calculations, Arnold's score after the multiplier is four hundred twenty seven thousand two hundred seventy four. So it is enough to make the tribe come out victorious on that pick. Very, very strong performance from him. That is the second highest score in the lobby, second only to Vaxe, of course, on the same team. Tommy with 380k on the hidden as well, only being outdone by Badu on hidden. It was strong scores from the nation on that map, but the tribe just had three really, really high scoring players on it, and that was enough to win it. So the bands coming out now. The second set of bands after four maps, both teams get one more ban. It looks like Hard Rock One has been taken out of the picture, which I think is a pretty good ban against the tribe. Going for those mechanics, taking another one away from them. But man, like the tribe taking Fimod Two is pretty big. That's one of the strong maps for the nation, and they improved their score by a good amount from yesterday, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, it just was not enough. I, I agree also with the hard rock ban being fairly good against the Tribe. We were talking before this match started about the raw aim consistency for a team like the Tribe. I mean, look at specifically a hard rock one play actually from the semifinals, so we were uh talking about you know the preferences between the two teams and how the tribe on the raw aim has generally tended to prefer the nomad and the hard rock the nation has tended to prefer hidden one free mod one so we may see one of those bands come out from the tribe maybe a free mod one man maybe something like the nomad six even could get banned out by the tribe here if they just don't want to deal with something that they might consider a toss-up in this matchup it wouldn't be a bad shout. I think Angel Salad is a map for the nation in this instance. Unless the tribe have something up their sleeve, and they certainly could with the individuals they have. I just think that map is a nation map through and through. Even more so than that No Mod 3, No Mod 4 that they've been holding on to data for. Plus, you mentioned the tribe have good players on that sort of map. You know, Iron Rose being alternate heavy circle tech, Hestia being slider techy. Oh! We're not going to see DT1, that's a surprise. But yeah. maybe they're afraid of the score from yesterday. They have to be. Demarsh mentioned it actually while we were in the pre-match show. That score, 3 million from uh, the nation yesterday on double time one is really, really strong. It's not something that you want to trifle with. And apparently the tribe don't want to as well. Banning out now three of the aim maps in this pool between both of the teams, Hidden One, Hard Rock One, and Double Time One, all gone now. So only No Mod One is left up as sort of a raw aim consistency map, and Free Mod One as the sort of high density awkward aim in Free Mod is left as well. But uh, two maps that I think are, are pretty different in how they play, um, sort of corresponding to Hard Rock One and Hidden One respectively. Kevlar Skin though, the next pick for the Tribe, they know Arison's here, and they're still picking this anyway. They have the speed roster for it, and they are confident that they can come out on top. 
I think the way those bands are going actually leave the rest of this game in a pretty interesting state because I think a lot of the picks that we're going to be going into are very well contested. We're going to be going into those No Mod 3s, No Mod 4s, the Hard Rock 2, more control focused, heavy precision in Hard Rock 3. I think that's the direction this game's going. I think the No Mod 1 might be a secondary, uh, a secondary element to this match. So the mechanics can start playing less of a role. Apart from, of course, maps like this, which is all about speed mechanics. But after this... Very speedy, this 270 BPM bursts all day, every day. Streams into bursts into streams with no break in between. So at this speed, it's for the, the high-end speed players because the stamina and the control required to manage this on a one try setting is tough. Uh, we saw yesterday that two players generally on each team did alright and third and fourth struggled. I think these teams are going to be more comfortable than that, but it is going to come down to you know individuals like Arison on the nation or players like Mathy on the tribe for stuff like this. Yeah, and when you get to this stage we've seen it already but those individual performances really can matter quite a bit that's a tommy arnold all popping off on that free mod two pick is what made the difference versus the nation uh, even in spite of a relatively low fourth score on their team uh, those individual performances matter so so much when you get to this sort of difficulty level within a map pool so let's see if it can come out for either of these teams. Arison yesterday was that individual score for the nation. There are multiple candidates on this team for the tribe. Arnold and Vaxe in particular, I think, are the two players you look to to be incredibly strong on the raw speed. And yeah, we were talking about the speed roster for the tribe before this, but Swaggy Swagster not in. Utami in instead here on oh. Nomad 5. So clearly trusting him, actually. Erecting on the Speed Cup champion as of recent, so I think a surprising sub, but clearly Utami looking comfortable on this compared to Rectagon. on for the tribe right now i'm looking at the nation as a team that is very very strong on the raw speed but clearly the tribe coming into this one just that bit warmer that bit better prepared it is their pick after all and they are looking like it here matthew the only player to have broken on their team so far apraxion Dumi breaking once again for the nation here on no mod 5 it's bartek and arison holding combo but not fc's and arison drops his as well now it's only bartek for the nation holding strong. Vaxe, Arnold, and Utami all still holding on to full combos. Arnold with 98% accuracy on this as well. I mean, you can see the reason they've picked it now. It's just, it's so going their way. You know, Matthew is actually even just starting to recover now. We see Bartek finally go as well. The last big combo for the nation. It's, I think it's it, it's time to, to call it. I think the, the tribe, they've, they've got this. 100%. This is just absolute dominance. Look at this. Three full combos still? Three quarters of the way into the map? Yeah, this is and incredible. Counting? This is ridiculous. Vaxe, Arnold, and Utami still going for the tribe right now. This is not expected whatsoever. Utami and Vaxe finally miss at the end here, but Arnold is finally going to drop at the very, very end of the map. It was almost a three-way full combo for the Tribe on this. Look at the score difference. It's more than double score for the Tribe on Nomad 5. That is More than double team score. What is that? That is incredible. We, you 
do not expect to see 2.5 million coming out on this map. I mean, that's ah, <laughs> what is what is that combo coming out from the tribe? That that was a slaughter. You don't see the nation ever get slaughtered that hard. That's incredible, ridiculous place there from the tribe. You know, we were thinking about, oh, yeah, maybe it's a solo score. You know, it might be a, a one player popping off. Well, the nation just got completely outclassed on that, right? I mean, the, the lowest score for Matthew, 437k, is still higher than Arison's top score for the nation of 409k. It is a win across the board. It is all four players just doing incredibly well for them. Not to mention three people almost full comboing that map in practice. You have to shout out 97% accuracy from Arison at the end of that because it is still really incredible that he was able to do that. But unfortunately, the combo wasn't there and the support from the team wasn't there. Even if it was, he could not have made up what is over 1.2 million team score in difference. And that leads us now into a uh, very different kind of map picked up by the nation here. Hard Rock 3, now that's a Toyota. Yeah, with, you know, a lot of the mechanics focused maps starting to disappear now and even being banned out i'm still surprised by that dt1 ban from the tribe but things like this as you know the weirder uh, gimmicky sort of picks is starting to be most of what is left and these should suit the nation pretty well uh this one being a very small circle size hard rock pick cs6 plus hard rock so you get cs 7.8 uh the patterns are relatively simple although there is some tricky spaced bursts and, you know, wide spacing on this. But the patterns are fairly easy to read and are fairly simple in terms of rhythm. But on this extremely small circle size and the spacing in both bursts and aim, it really pushes precision extremely hard above anything else. Yeah, this map's precision patterning is mostly focused around linear bursts it's focused around a lot of sort of consistent spacing except for a few patterns where you go from nearly a stack into very high spacing right afterwards and those sorts of transitions on cs 7.8 after hard rock almost circle size eight on this map uh, Osu for Ants going on here. It, it really is just very, very tricky to have that level of precision. You see a couple breaks from Ryu and Apraxia alongside a Reed Cat breaking for the Tribe. The first time that we've seen him in this matchup. Faxi and Intercamping also finding a couple of breaks, but you finding a few breaks. It's Fancy Lad and Rectigon holding on to the full combos for either team right now. Again, these precision maps, they're the sort of thing that if you have a, a an insane run on it, you, you can you can pull it home for the team if if need be. And these breaks coming in across the board, we see we've seen a Praxi, a Reed Cat, into Camming drop as well. Ayu follows, and there goes Fancy Lad, big combo for the nation, and Badu as well. But we do see Rectagon drop. Vaxi is there with a very high combo. Yeah, it's the transition from the high score for Rectagon into the supporting scores for Intercamping and Vaxe that makes this roster for the tribe so scary on so many of these different maps. Vaxe and Intercamping now holding higher combo than either Rectagon or Fancy Lad had, even at max, and that is just... It makes it so difficult to try and stage a comeback. Already two scores above 300k for the tribe, none for the nation at the halfway point. You actually see a break from Vaxxer coming out of that break, and there goes into Camping, but there is actually a bit of combo on the side of the nation in Ayu and Badu, but there goes Badu, and Rectagon is there to stop Ayu pulling back any score going into this last quarter. And there goes Ayu as well. There's just nothing for the nation here. I think they're going to drop a break point to the tribe here. This Rectagon breaks. Yeah, Rectagon breaks, but again, now there's Vaxe, there's Reedcat even with that break from Vaxe as well. And the score lead is also a form of insurance for them at this point. 350k in the favor of the Tribe, that's not going anywhere. It is going to be that break point. 5-1 to one after this here in the Grand Finals. The Tribe have 
continued to show this level of dominance throughout the tournament, and they're doing it here once again. The Nation are really looking a little bit on the ropes here. Uh, it's next pick for the Tribe. If they win their next pick, they can put it at match point 6-1, to one, and that is what would be for the Nation a very early end to this Grand Finals. Yeah, the super precision not really working out because the Tribes just four person rostered having the nation player for player on this and that's a really good team score across the board really it was fairly decent from the nation as well but the tribe just have a one up on this one uh reed cat comboing the end there was a solid way to wrap it up and yeah rectagon there swaggy swagster with that excellent combo in the first section to really add a lead and just the rest of his team just kept it there There is still a lot of Nomad, and the Nation have been a Nomad team a lot of this tournament. We're going into a Nomad 4 now, which is one of the ones we were talking about that would be well contested. The sorts of maps that both teams have done well on, but more so the Nation, historically. If this is a really interesting pick, and I think if this is a win for the Tribe, it is just such a huge mental blow. Nomad 4 has been something that the Nation has picked up multiple times throughout this tournament in nearly every match. We saw them go for free mod 2 earlier as one of those slider tech picks. This one is similar with a little bit of a higher focus on cut streams and cut patterning within this one. But it, it, it's, it's a map that the Nation have leaned into. It's a type of pick that the Nation have leaned into so much so throughout this tournament that if this win actually does go over for the tribe you know you start to think well where did the nation look from here because this is one of those maps where i would have said hey they can try to lean into this as their next pick instead so losing it here to the tribe uh i think begs the question of where are the options it's a, it's an important one for the nation to win you've spelled it out there this is something that they definitely have a great chance on but if they drop this it really is mount everest uh, although they will have the pick in tow, it's not like they have nothing at that point. But we have seen them drop a couple of their own picks at this point on, I think, more contested picks. Or, I mean, least cont less contested picks than this one. This is a great chance for a break point, I feel. Uh, it's fairly short. Mia mapping, uh, a very well-known slider tech mapper. And this one is, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot like... Some of the other ones, if these players have played it in solo, which they 100% have. Uh, lots of high SV sliders into bursts, into sliders. Lots of patterns where you have these bursts going into these slider shapes, and they sort of work together to make large sections of tough slider tech patterning in this. Uh, and a lot of it is in fairly standard flow shapes that tech players are going to be totally used to, but of course, bumped up to almost seven star mechanics. We're going to see which of these teams is more comfortable on it. We've sort of spelled it out already. The Nation, I think, really want to win this pick, want to start up this comeback on a break point. It would be such a big swing in momentum if they were able to do so. But Flying Tune of Axe, Reedcat, and Intercambing in on this one for the Tribe is one heck of a roster for a tech pick. Are you Bartek, Fancy Lad, Nepraxia? Very strong for the Nation as well. We'll see if they can pull off that break point. Early break there coming in from AU to start this off. Not a good sign of things to come. And the nation, they're really going to, like you mentioned, need this break point. You know, they're going to have to take two back just to force a tiebreaker situation. So they've really got to turn it around here and now. There were the breaks from Recap earlier on. Intercamping finding a couple of breaks as well for the tribe now. So it's only Tuna and Daxe holding on to full combo for them. Aryu and Apraxia both broken on the side of the nation though. So two full combos to two right now. Bartek drops as well on the square jumps right before the slider breakdown. Everyone except for Intercamping and Reed Cat dropping on those double streams. Aryu actually as well holding on to the combo. Intercamping and Reed Cat dropping. Aryu still holding for the nation right now. Does find a couple of misses on that section and now it is entirely combo reset for both teams. Tuna and Vaxe, however, with the highest combo over on the side of the tribe. Yeah, AU and Apraxia already had some of the worst, you know, breaks at the worst time on this map. And we 
seen flying tuna drop, but Vaxe is there with a good combo. Fancy is trying to sort of hold him off and stop him gaining any score lead. But his teammates are struggling on this la this later section of the map. We see Apraxia really struggling. A, you can't seem to build a combo. And it's just a battle between those two. But there's pulling back a better score, I think. Vaxe breaks! Vaxe breaks, Fancy is holding on to the combo, but is there enough time? There's not going to be as misses come through right at the end for Fancy, and even then, it was still close to 100k, the score deficit that he would have had to make up. It's just not happening with that little sliver of map left at the end there. It is the top score in the lobby for Fancy Lad, but unfortunately not high enough. Vaxe Flying Tuna, both above 400,000, and nobody on the nation making that mark except for Fancy Lad with that top score. The lower scores from Intercamming and Reed Cat as well, slightly more consistent than the bottom two scores for the nation. And that overall team consistency, the four player roster put up for the tribe, is enough to put them over the finish line despite the highest score going over to the nation. You were saying that one was going to be competitive, and it definitely was. I think the difference really was at the end there. Vaxe, as it tends to be, being the difference maker. Comboing about 400 to 500 combo in a section where everyone around him was breaking. And that really was what split them up. Because apart from that, they were trading blows well. But man, the tribe now. They are one point away from the title. A break point away, mind you. The nation going straight into hard work too. Which should be another one that they will fancy their chances on. Yeah, this is one where uh, yesterday when we were interviewing with uh, with Edward with BTMC after the match, he said, oh yeah, we didn't really feel super confident on this one, so we banned it out. Uh, very clearly not the case. They're picking this when they are down match point. They've got to be feeling good on three metrics here. Bartek actually, I believe, has the number one score in solo on this map with hidden hard rock as well. So this is a map that the nation absolutely have the potential to dominate on. Are you Fancy Lad and Bidu? It looks like going to be rounding out the roster for the nation here. Flying Tuna, Swaggy Swagster, and Vagse in for the tribe right now, waiting on one more. I would expect somebody like Reed Cat, Intercamming, or Tommy to come in, uh, given that they really do have a few interchangeable players for this one. But uh, let's talk a little bit about this, because it's not necessarily a standard sort of finger control act test like we see in a lot of other hard rock maps. No, this one isn't. This one is more about raw aim control on low BPM. You see that 150 BPM there? Uh, it's mostly about those on one, two taps, but the, the aim shapes are very awkward and irregular. And of course, on this circle size, a lot of control required to aim at these patterns. There are a, a few, like a couple of uh, one sixes, but they're very short and not really notable. A couple of longer flow aim sections in this as well, but they're full of cut streams, so it's all about aim control on the VPN. You see a couple of early breaks coming through for Rectigon over on the side of the tribe. Everybody else holding on to the combo as we get a slight bit of downtime here, less intense on the aim control at this point in the map. Yeah, both teams have a really good start here. Uh, as you, yeah, as you mentioned, slight advantage for the nation, but there goes Ayu, as well as Utami. Good trade-ups, Vaxe drops, puts it in favor of the nation at this point. And we're already nearly a third of the way through this map. It's not that long. That can prove disastrous with some of those earlier breaks. Yeah, this one is really, really fast. Flying Tuna drops as well now. It's still three full combos for the nation on this. This is why they saved this pick for when they were down at match point. Three full combos still at the halfway point. Are you matching the highest combo from Utami over on the side of the tribe? They are looking comfortable for the nation right now. <laughs> Aryu as well, uh, sort of laughing at himself. The only player to have missed on his team so far on this one. Bartek does join him, I'm not sure. There's only a big combo on the side of Vaxe for the tribe. They're gonna need more than that. A double break from Flying Junior and, and uh, Rectagon as well as Utami. 
I think the nation going into this last quarter, they are well in the lead and they should have this very comfortably, especially with that last break from Vaxay. There's no combo anywhere. I mean, look at the score lead. It's almost, it's 700k plus in the favor of the nation. They don't need double score like we saw on Nomad 5 to show that this is something they are very, very strong on. This type of low BPM aim control is working out incredibly well for them here in Hard Rock 2. And that is absolutely what they needed, but it is very little right now. They are still down 6-2 to two in this matchup. The Tribes still have the next pick, and they have two more picks in this match. One right now, and even if they lose it, one left at the end of the match to try and close this out, avoid that tiebreaker scenario, and the chance at bracket reset for the nation. But we'll see what the next pick is. We'll see if the nation, with that swing in momentum, with a little bit of uh, better mental now, I think after that win, we'll be able to pull this one back. Yeah, hopefully that can rally the troops a little bit for the nation. That was a huge win, decisive, very decisive. I imagine that rocked the tribe a little bit, but they're not gonna be too concerned because of that buffer they have. The nation still have a lot of work to do. Uh, I think in terms of raw mechanics though, No Mod 1 is there, but the nation of a strong No Mod 1 team. Free Mod 1 could be could be a little weird in this game. But outside of that, I don't think there's any obvious picks for the tribe to just stomp on anymore. They have to take a pick that's contested, and well, they have plenty of uh, breathing room to make that happen. Gotta be said. Yeah, they do have a little bit of breathing room. Oh. Talk oh, about oh. contested maps. You talk about contested maps. We looked at Nomad 6 for both of these teams during the pre-match show. This is something that we were expecting. This is our rhythm tech pick in Nomad 6, the polyrhythm sort of map that has made its way into the tournament meta within the last year or so. It is incredibly difficult to get the accuracy together on this one, and this map has a bit of an aim requirement to it as well, so very, very tricky overall. Yeah, incredibly just chaotic breakcore mapping with rhythm that doesn't stand still. Tough to read. It's not a density check by any means, but the rhythms are tough to read. They're tough to aim with too, with some tricky aim. Tough snaps that constantly change. Uh, the odd little 1-8 triple pattern as well, but it's all about aim control and tapping control, rhythm control. And well, I'd say this is a fancy lad map for the tribe. I think they have someone of their own who could do something on this, mentioning no names. There he is. Loving these full swaps right now, though. <laughs> yeah, every taking a moment. Swapping out here for uh, for the nation, making sure that they are ready to go in this one. I think we can sort of expect a similar lineup, though, to yesterday, where we saw in Fancy Lad, we saw in Bartek, we saw in Aryu, and I believe we saw Apraxia as the last player in on this one, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was Arison actually was their last player in here for the nation, it looks like. But Dew is actually going to be coming in as the fourth, though, this time around. So one swap made in comparison to yesterday's uh, in comparison to yesterday's lineup for the nation, good luck, have funds are out. It looks like they are just about ready to go for both teams. Yeah, even though Arisa did play yesterday, he did get the lowest score in the lobby, so maybe they're just swapping their tack out a little bit here. They have the personnel to do it on maps like this. Yeah, this one is absolutely chaotic. We saw yesterday Fancy Lad with the S rank 450k on this. That was the highest score in the lobby and was more than enough to put them over the finish line against the P model team who was in the loser bracket finals yesterday against the nation. I'll see if he can pull off a similar score today here. 
against the tribe. This is the tribe's pick, by the way. Early breaks for RU and Vaxe on either team. Flying Tuna dropping as well. Arnold dropping as well. Bartek and Fancy Lad missing over on the side of the nation. This is Tommy and Badu able to hold on to the full combo from the start of the map. Bartek finding another break for the nation. It's more repeated breaks on their side so far. Accuracy ever so slightly in their favor with the combo deficit, though. And that is now going to give the score over to the side of the tribe with those extra misses from Bartek, Aryu, and Fancy Lad all coming through. It's only Badu able to hold on for the side of the nation. Arnold drops over on the side of the tribe, which is going to help. Vaxe as well drops for them. That's Tuna and Utami, though, with high combo, and only Badu again with the full combo for the side of the nation right now. As long as he's able to hold, though, they definitely still have a chance in this. Utami is going to make it tough, though. Still holding on to a full combo for the tribe alongside Tuna's high combo for support. Yeah, Badu is there up against Utami, but Flying Tuna providing amazing support for the tribe. If, if the way this keeps going, Flying Tuna has dropped, but there's still that deficit to make up, and Badu is gone. Utami also drops, but look at that score gap. That break from Fancy is disastrous. There's nothing on the side of the nation going into the last third of this map. Yeah, it's going to have to depend entirely on the last third here. It's still technically winnable. It's only 150,000 score in the favor of the tribe. If they struggle on this last part of the map and the nation are able to hold on to their combos significantly, it can go over. But we see multiple breaks from Bartek and Aryu, Flying Tuna, and Tommy Fancy, and Badu break as well, though. And with that, another four-way reset for the nation. It's too little. It's too late. They're able to pull it off on Hard Rock 2. They're able to pull it off on their first pick in this matchup as well on Hidden 3. But that's all she wrote. The Tribe have lost seven maps in total throughout the entire run in the Perennial. And they are going to be your champions in the Grand Final 7-2 against the Nation. And you gotta give props. It's Utami. We talk about so many players on the Tribe. We talk about Vaxe, Mathy, Flying Tuna. Utami gets the top score to win the tournament on a team full of megastars. you got to give him props. Incredibly impressive performance here from Utami and entering the tournament scene relatively recently. What a way to make your name known. It really is. Uh, Utami has been going off as of recent. He uh, was recently number one out of the Course Ace Closed Qualifiers, and I think is showing why here. So many breakout scores for him on all different sorts of maps within this match. It is hard to pigeonhole him into a role of uh, somebody who only does well at certain things or another. But it is, uh, it is a fantastic win for the Tribe overall. They had so many players who performed ridiculously well in this matchup so far. You have to give credit to Vaxe in on literally every single map for the Tribe. If you talk about consistent tournament performance, he is a player that you have to mention consistently up there in the top two scores on his team through, I believe, every map except for Angel Salad, which we just saw. I mean, that is, it, it really is just a ridiculous performance. The rest of the tribe always sort of there to back him up, even when his scores were lacking, like on that hidden three play. And it, it, it just points to a team that has been so dominant. They've again lost only seven maps throughout the entirety of this tournament. It's, it's just a little bit ridiculous how incredibly dominant they were throughout the perennial. You can say a lot about preparation and the nation with their run they have really they've done really well through that and just their raw ability because this you know this team is full of tournament superstars who have been around for years and are still knocking around at the very top of their game of course a fantastic run by them no surprise to see them make this grand final and a second place taking a chunk of that prize pool taking home that trophy taking home the JTB trophy of course can't be knocking that but uh, I guess y there's not much you can do when you have such a high skill ceiling when you have players like Vaxe at this level there's only so much you can do I suppose it really is just how it is there's only so much you can do here Ready. 
Video. Can talk a little bit about this tiebreaker here, Invisible Frenzy by Kobaria, Camellia's 593 Insanely Fluctuated Remix. It is uh, a song that has a little bit of everything. It's got some of that break chord that we saw in No Mod Sticks. It's got a couple of sort of jazzy sections within it as well that we just heard. It's got quite a lot of the sort of in-your-face uh, ADM sort of tech-sounding tech uh, tech sounding sections within the song as well and it just made this sort of song uh, a map that can deal with pretty much any sort of pattern and we've got anything from 300 bpm bursts, 225 bpm streams, 150 bpm alt patterns all throughout this map. With the bpm the way it is of course it's, it's mapped to essentially 296 a lot of the uh, sections at the start in the first half or so are more focused on control and aim. Very aim heavy start. Of course, on this BPM, they're generally like alt style jumps. You can compare the aim kind of to something like you would see on like Jen's Darms or as an Arbitrator, which is a similar sort of BPM. The aim is sort of like that. But you have a lot of linear control sections as well. It goes into more of those in the middle. There were some tricky rhythms in the middle as well on hard snaps and lots of variants there. And then the ending, which you're hearing now, starts getting into more of the speed where you start seeing more one fours at this BPM. And one fours at this BPM are very fast, so that ending is very speed heavy. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it really is a map that just does a little bit of everything. Uh, the 300 BPM 9 note bursts at the end of it to top it off are uh, exactly the sorts of speed patterns that you look to for some sort of end game patterning. Uh, 300 BPM is really where you start to get into the raw speed requirement of purely solo play types of speed maps, uh, stuff that is not <laughs> normally tested even at all within tournament play. Listen to it. Yeah, I can hear those bursts. They are fast. Yeah, a lot of the tiebreakers throughout the tournament have been focusing less and just been mostly about aim and streams. And we wanted to try and implement maps that have a lot of elements to it. And especially the last couple. We had a post-mortem and raining blood, which is currently qualified. You should play it. It's a good map. Although it is eight stars. It's kind of hard. Uh, we had a nerfed version. But these sorts of maps, right, where they go from one sort of pattern, from aim, and then they go into control, and they have sections that test different things. We'll be going through a lot of maps like that, and this map, no exception. It goes from one sort of pattern to another one that takes a completely different set of skills to play. Getting some peeps here to, to run the victory lap. Flying Tuna, Reed Cat, Vaxe, and Utami on the tribe. BTMC popping in alongside Fancy Lad, Apraxia, and Arison playing this. Hey, I think I think Arison on this would be quite interesting to see, especially with the speed elements to this. I mean, you can't go into a map like this and not be able to deal with some of the speed requirements here. It's, this is such a ridiculous sort of map. It even starts out with some of those 300 PPM first read cap finding them as uh, the very start there. Early break going with Apraxia and Utami. And Arison as well, actually joining that list. Vaxe and BTMC will follow. Still good combos coming out from Fly Tuner and Fancy Lad. Dude, last time I mentioned, oh, no one's going to FC it. And then White Cat straight after the lobby, one missed raining blood. I'm not going to say that again. Yeah, I mean, it's. It's a very difficult map, but it's probably FCable for some players. I don't want to say in this lobby, uh, but for some players in solo, it's definitely FCable. Vaxxing misses on one of the alt triples, actually. 
uh, down at the bottom left of the screen. Flying Tuna now, the only FC left up in the lobby at the moment. I don't think anybody really wants to be the first to, to curse him and break it. He is putting on a very good performance here. Everyone else sort of struggling just a little bit more. There's uh, actually really good accuracy oh. coming out from Faxi and Fancy Lad as well. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, un unfortunate, but I mean, these... The entire map is filled with stuff like this that is just so easy to break on. And you really have to be on your game for every sort of pattern and when it comes up in order to deal with it. Not being prepared for the slider tech patterns, not being prepared for the alt patterns, not being prepared for the 225 BPM stream in the middle of the map after this section as well, can be very, very uh, killer on the score, frankly. Get into the more control focused section then. This massive stack though. Look at those 100s. Now here comes more control. This is where more of the rhythm comes in. I have a couple A's on the board, which is cool to see. Both on the tribe. Flying Tuna is so impressive when it comes to tech maps. When you hit these tech sections, it's just crazy. I, it really is. It's sort of ridiculous to see the accuracy for both Tuna and Vaxi. Uh, Fancy Lad and Apraxia are... Uh, both above the 90% mark as well. Shout out from Utami there to the nation for a good fight. That was a, a, a lot of close maps, a lot of very one-sided maps, but a lot of close maps in this matchup as well. Yeah, I think it was talked about about how this, you know, some of these, well, this this, this whole match could, you know, come down to sort of RNG. You know, it's uh, there is that bit of randomness to to certain map plays that just. You know, some days it goes your way, some days it doesn't. I think that was that's probably the biggest separation. I think I still believe that any one of these teams could have edged out a win had the circumstances been slightly different. Vaxe, hello. Yeah, Vaxe, uh, oh Vaxe hitting these patterns, by the way, at the end. Hitting all of the aim section there is really tough. That's where the aim spikes to that above eight star mark. Yeah, now is we're in the top it. Yeah, now we're into the 300 BPM section as well. That's it? That's it? Oh no! <laughs> oh, it was so close. <laughs> finally, finally drops at the very end of the 300 BPM section, but that is, uh, that is some ridiculous score for sure. And I think if you were asking about, you know, the expected result on a tiebreaker between these two teams, Vaxi Flying Tuna going off on this sort of map is really what you expect. Uh, Fancy Lad as well with the highest score on the side of the nation, I think, is oh my a, a player that you have to shout out. Is it S rank? S rank? Oh my god! What the what? fuck? <laughs> that is insane! Uh, okay, Tuna. Alright. How do you S rank that? Yeah. Actually, how do you S rank that? Uh, that is. You'll love to see it. Maybe, maybe the next one should be. Maybe we need to buff it a bit. It's clearly not hard enough. Yeah, clearly the eight star rank this uh, the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> clearly the eight star five hundred ninety three BPM tiebreaker is just hard, not hard enough for Tuna. Uh, pulls off the S rank there, second highest score in the lobby as well. But we've got to give shout outs. Congratulations to the tribe. They are your champions in the perennial Swaggy Swagster, Reedcat, Utami, Flying Tuna, Vaxe, Arnold, Mathy, and Intercambing your winners here in the first iteration of the perennial the nation coming in second place of course putting up a good fight in the grand finals but unable to deal with the sheer dominance that the tribe showed throughout this entire tournament are you Dimi, Arison, but do you i'm a fancy lad btmc bartek and apraxia there and of course in third place p model they're upset in the semi-finals earning them that winner's finals spot and making it into the top three skill sawadaka blaze neox abyssal taquito Kriller, and fg sky 
putting up a fantastic performance in this tournament. It really was fantastic to watch these three teams throughout and the way that they were able to come out on top in so many difficult matchups. You look at the bracket for this tournament and it was not an easy run for any of these teams. Yeah, I mean, this is, of course, it's, it's a top end tournament. All the best players join this and the, the competition was so fierce. So to reach top three in this tournament is a massive achievement, no matter who you are, really. Uh, Tribe and the Nation, though, their rosters were built to get here, and they did. But you got to give them props for incredible play and incredible competition. And also that third place. I would like to shout out P-Model. They are, I think, relatively speaking, the the underdog heroes here. They, they qualified in fourth seed. And there were quite a few teams that were higher than them on BWS and a few other teams that more people may have put over P-Model. But you got to give these guys props. A great run and they take a deserved podium finish. Looking so good in the early rounds. So congrats to P-Model as well for taking a very hard earned third place here. Yeah, it, it's... It's a definitely, I think, for a lot of people, not the team that they would have expected, but qualifying in fourth seed for P-Model, uh, that upset in the semifinals against the first seed qualifying team in the nation was a, a matchup that did so well for making them into the top three there. That, that winner's finals bout against the Tribe, where they were actually able to take... I believe three points off of the tribe in that matchup. It was uh, a really fantastic match to watch in the winners' finals, and definitely a deserved top three finish for P Model as well. But we do have a couple of people that we want to congratulate on winning the tournament. We have a couple of champions here from the tribe joining us: Swaggy Swagster and Utami. Congratulations on the win! Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and ask a couple of questions about just sort of the pick strategy in general. I think one of the maps that we were really interested to see get picked in this one was Nomad 4 Hestia. We were talking about that map as potentially uh, a winning pick for the nation. So was that sort of a map that you thought would have been contested or was it something that you were looking to sort of deal as a mental blow instead, picking into a map that they had been going for throughout the tournament? Um, I think... Um, I think we had a really solid lineup, like, f up to five of our players were able to play that. So, we, since we felt really comfortable, we just kind of picked it. We were just picking into our strengths rather than their weaknesses. Uh, yeah, absolutely. definitely. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Uh, I want to just ask a little bit more about sort of the picks and bans before we uh, just talk about generally, you know, the complete victory here for the grand finals. Talk about Hidden One a little bit. We were actually looking at that, you know, Tuna with number one on the map. So uh, what was the thought process behind banning that one straight away? It seemed, uh, it seemed like a map that both teams, I think, would have been pretty good on. Hmm. I think in uh. general <laughs> So I think in general they have a more solid lineup for that map. We were yeah. we probably had like a fourth player missing or um and I feel like they have like four players that are super comfortable on hidden one. Yeah, definitely. As well as Badu who's Played well last match and in other matches as well on that map. Wait, Has he got 800, 800k in losers. Um, Tuna wants to join in too. I have just seen his message. Welcome Flying Tuna also to the interview. Congratulations on the win. Yo, thank you. <laughs> Wait. Okay, okay. My voice is detecting. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, yeah nice just... win, guys. Nice win. And uh, you're talking about the hidden one, yeah. I think, to be honest, that was a good ban because of the four they did last time, uh, the nation. So, yeah, Fair I just enough. wanted to explain why we like didn't like, why we like banned this this man. Like, I was number one, but like, I had like massive mind block on that map, so like, I was constantly like missing like same pattern. So I was like, oh yeah, maybe I don't think I can do that well in the real match. So. 
I just decided to like, yeah, say yeah. no in this move. Yeah. I think confidence is like a really big importance to me. Like, I feel like even if you're good at the map, if you're not confident that day, we shouldn't play it. You should yeah, always right. be confident for yeah. that. I agree with you on that one. Um, I just want to talk a bit about Kevlar's skin. Did you guys expect to do that well on it? Because we were amazed at how well you guys played. Was that how it was going in practice? Or did you guys just have a pop-off run there? Mm. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was practiced as I have seen it. And like, as well as Arnold and other people were feeling really good on it. And we saw their scores from last matches. And we were like, we were thinking that we definitely had a strong advantage on it. Yeah. At least in my sure. opinion. Yeah. Because compared to the last scores we saw, we were we, we were impressed. <laughs> Crazy scores on that compared to what we saw before. So very well played on that, just got to say. Uh, and I actually don't have any uh, any other questions about the pick and ban order. Dooms, Demarsh, if you have any more, go ahead and ask them right now. Uh, otherwise, we'll get into just a couple final questions for our winners. Oh, I do have one, actually. Um, you guys left putting Funfair open. Did you guys feel good on that? Because that's a nation map. They've been picking that a lot. I was surprised when it wasn't banned. To be honest, was did you guys feel good on that? Or we were mm. like kind of considering that a couple other maps, and but we like ultimately decided on DT one as our main ban. Yeah, we saw how like consistent they were at that map, so we just decided it would be a good ban for us, especially oh, yeah. after I saw. I saw Fancy almost have seeing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's pretty good at aim. What can I say? <laughs> That's yeah. true. He's the <laughs> very, aim very guy. True. Yeah. Very true. All right. Well, I want to say congratulations once again. How's it feel coming out on top in the grand finals? You're the champions, guys. Feels great. Very. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any plans in particular for your money? <laughs> after the tournament is over, I do not know. It's <laughs> gonna have to save it for now. Yeah, I might save it because yeah, I soon have like military service and stuff, so oh, I have to like AFK for um, like one point five years, which is pretty yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm a pro, yeah. probably yeah, save it. Fair, I can respect <laughs> I the saving. I can respect that. Yeah. Also, uh, buy some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> the, the particular Boy, use for perennial yeah. cash fried chicken absolutely yeah that's, yeah, my, that's my favorite use for it all right we're gonna we're gonna drag in one more player in here we're gonna get btmc in the interview lobby uh yo rectagon flying to now utami thank you so much for the interview you guys can head out if you want to or if you want to stick around and chat with edward you're welcome to stay as well i think i have to stick around for this one <laughs> Welcome in, Edward. Congratulations on the second place finish. Commiserations for no bracket reset, but uh, it was a it was a well fought match. How's it feel getting the getting the second place finish specifically after yesterday? Really? Ed, oh, what's Edward? up? Hello. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> me. I was joined, I joined mid call, and like I said something. I was like, wait, is he talking to me? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Could you repeat that question? I'd appreciate that. Absolutely. Congratulations on the second place. How? Uh, Thank you. How, how? How did? Uh, how did that match in general? I think compared to sort of your expectations for maybe like how you thought that was going to go, because I think a lot of us, especially on the desk, we were predicting it to be a lot closer between the two teams. I was hoping for it to be a lot closer as well. However, when I started my stream, I was looking in chat and I saw a message from Airu and it mentioned that he may have uh, not have been in the best uh, condition to play. All right. He did mention that there was like a slight chance he was hungover. <laughs> oh, <laughs> going to Saturday night. But <laughs> we tried our absolute best. Although uh, it was a pretty, it was a pretty clear uh, consensus that a lot of us weren't really playing at our absolute peak. We tried our absolute best, and that's all that matters. And at the end of the day, the tribe just absolutely crushed us, dude. You guys are insane! <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> it's a fantastic run. 
to get here though. And like I said, this, that, that, those runs on Podium Funfair were pretty sick. And also uh, Primatrix, that hard work too. Mm -hmm. You guys did so well on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our team were so fucking confident. Bartek is literally number one on the map. So like, we were literally just like, okay, dude, this is a free pick for us. We'll save it when we desperately need it. And we brought it out when we desperately needed it. The only problem is it wasn't enough. <sighs> Get the yeah. job, though. Oh, no, you yeah. guys did insane yeah. on that map. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. That definitely was. Oh. We're actually pretty much good to go here. Thank you all for coming in for an interview. We're always happy to have you on the broadcast. Congratulations again to the tribe on the first place finish. Congratulations again to Edward and the Nation for Thank you the for second having place me. in the perennial. We're going to go ahead and give a few thanks to the staff here. So thank you all for coming in. And we'll have you, uh, have you head out as we do a couple last few things. Thank you. Thank you for yeah, the great tournament. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Thanks for hosting an amazing tournament. Good yeah, job to everyone. Fantastic. Tuna, when did when your balls drop that fucking deep, dude? Holy lord. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, your All voice right. is so deep. Sound yeah. like a man. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and get on to the last couple of things on our items for uh, for the tournament. Thank you all so much for heading in here. And we're going to give a few thanks to the, uh, the people who ran the tournament. All right. Have a good one. Okay. Pleasure. So we want to, of course, thank all of our organizers who uh, were a major part in actually organizing the tournament. Chillier Pair, myself, uh, Leo FLT, and Fairy Bread. Uh, we were the people who originally organized the tournament, picked out the staff for it, and created the tournament in general. Uh, it was uh, it was a heck of a process making this. It was very a very lengthy prep process for this tournament and a uh, very lengthy execution for this tournament as well. Very very much time went into this from every single one of us trying to make the tournament happen, and uh, we're honestly really glad with how it turned out overall. So I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to sit up there with my other tournament organizers here. Yes, a lot of time went into this, but I think the end products come out really nice and created some great moments. So thank you very much for all of your effort here, Dio, and of course, to Chilia, Leo, and Fairy Bread. Fantastic effort, really. Did a great part. Let's go ahead and uh, say some thanks to some other people, because there were a lot of people who made a lot of things possible in this tournament. Uh, we want to thank a few uh, playtesters in particular. Jordan... Vivace and Fiery did so much work through, especially the early stages in this tournament, providing so much feedback on a lot of the earlier maps in particular within this tournament, uh, that it was it was very, very helpful to have them on board. And of course, all of our other playtesters as well. Many more people on this list did do a lot of work in making sure that the pools had as much balance as they did within this tournament. It was very, very helpful to have all of these people on board. No, oh, yeah, you just see just a huge list of people. Uh, so many, too, too many to thank, really. You know, you see what five lines of different players. They're all, you know, providing feedback on on some of the maps. And yeah, we we really couldn't have done it without you guys. It was such a group effort. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. In, in all, uh, in all, forty eight people within uh, within the playtester <laughs> and the players. So it was an absolutely massive, uh, it was a massive map pulling team. Yep, absolutely. And a lot of very honest opinions, which is very useful for map pooling. So I appreciate your honesty, guys. Um, I will move on to the referees here. This is a much smaller referee team for a tournament this size than you usually uh, would expect. But every referee here really pulled their weight. Specimen, of course, our grand finals ref, uh, was selected for it for a reason. Showed very, very strong refereeing throughout the tournament. Was an absolute boon to have. Um, and everybody else on this list, of course, pulled their weight, made sure that these matches went off pretty much without a hitch throughout the entire tournament. There are maybe one or two uh, matches and qualifier lobbies that had any issues whatsoever, and we really appreciate them all making sure that they ran smoothly. Yeah, and that's so, so important. These guys did a great job, of course. The referees are the, the troopers that make everything per game run smoothly. So shout out to all the refs 
not just in the perennial, but across the tournament scene. You guys do a valiant service for us. All right, we'll move on one more time to our custom mappers. We had a lot of maps make their way into this tournament in the end. Half Slashed, even though he didn't actually make a map for this tournament, uh, was one of the people coordinating all of those custom maps, making sure that uh, all of them received proper mods where it needed, that they were all up to par with the level needed to go into a tournament like this. And uh, all of the other custom mappers who actually created the maps put a lot of effort into these, and we really appreciate them taking the time to make sure that this tournament had brand new content to bring to uh, the overall OS community as well. It was a great experience, map pooling with custom maps. It was the first time I did it personally, and yeah, half slashed. Massive, massive shout outs for doing a lot of the modding on the mapper side because you know, I'm, I'm you know, I helped out with map pools, but I'm no modern pro mapper. But Half Slash did an excellent job at getting the mapping nitty gritty done on a lot of these. So, thank you so much, Half, for that. It's been very handy having you here. And that is going to bring us, I think, to just a couple of other categories. We did have a few map selectors, Half Slash and Bubble Man. Uh, Bubble Man, especially in the early stages of the map pool selection stage, was key in creating the format and helping out with everything before the quarterfinals. Uh, Half Slash coming in mostly right at the tournament start, basically, to help out with, of course, the custom mapping. And then uh, Dooms started it off strong alongside me and finished it off through the grand finals there every single week, helping with the process super intensively. So very much appreciate all of their efforts on the map pool selection. It was uh, a tough ride through the tournament with uh, a lot of work put into the map pools. Yeah, it definitely was very time consuming, but incredibly rewarding. It's, it's been an amazing experience working with you and, and Bubble and Half and all the other mappers and getting these map pools together. So thank you very much for allowing me to help you here. It's uh, been great. <laughs> I should be thanking you for all the work you did in helping put them together. It was, it was really rewarding working with, uh, working with a lot of people with very much more experience than me on the map pools here. I, I've learned a lot about um, exactly what I want to do going into the future with map pools. So I very much appreciate all of the work that went in from everybody else on the team. You have a couple of more uh, types of staff to appreciate here right at the end. We did have a few streamers, of course. XCraftP was our main streamer throughout the tournament. He is the one behind the, behind the screen right now bringing you this broadcast as well has been doing so for so many of our other broadcasts and we really want to thank him for the massive amount of effort he's put into this tournament not only as a streamer but also doing a few custom designs for this tournament as well going the extra mile to make sure really that this tournament uh had the highest production quality that we could possibly give it it's very much appreciated for what he did and of course with black shark kali and moe wagon also stepping in, making sure that every match that we could possibly get broadcast in this tournament received a stream. Yeah, I, I think we can we can say that the that all of the streams that were we were able to bring you across the the perennial, it was just such good quality, and every you know all the streamers so professional, uh, always arriving early and setting up and make sure everything's ready. Um, you know, just overall, so much hard work goes goes into that role. Um, you know, very appreciative for everybody that that really helped out with that. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. Cheers, Craft. All right, and I think last but not least, we have our commentators. These are the people who brought you the matches live, who animated the experience. We had six people on the desk at some point during during this tournament. This one guy, Chillier Parrot, Demarsh, and Bubble Man, uh, bringing up a lot of the matches through the early stages. T1G on one of our very very early broadcasts, even before the round of 32 started, and then. Uh, of course, Doomsday and I were on, I don't even know how many broadcasts, Demarsh as well joined us on so, so many broadcasts, so I, I really do appreciate you two being here throughout basically the entire tournament, making uh, all of the broadcasts that bit much better, and making sure that all of the matches were animated for everyone watching. Uh, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. Always, so always, fun. always thankful. And that is going to do it for us, I believe that is. Oh no, we do have a couple more. I did forget, we have our visual designers to thank. Chill Your Pair was our head designer. Basically, every graphic that you see, either on 
the website or in our videos on stream was designed by him in some way or another, including all of these slides that we just showed off. Uh, so we do want to thank him for the massive amount of effort and time that he put into this. Leo FLT entirely developed the website. So if you have ever used the website and when you used it to register, when you put anything into that site, look for information on it. He was the one who brought you that. Ice Dynamics was brought on part of the way through to help with all of the spreadsheets. And that was a lot of backend work that made sure that everything ran smoothly. All of the data on the website is actually displayed in some form or another on a backend spreadsheet that Ice Dynamics and Leo FLT co-designed. So very, very strong, uh, strong backend team from them. Um, with Fairy Bread helping out with the actual design of the website, putting all the elements in the right place, making sure that it all looked fantastic. We appreciate his work on that back end as well, or rather front end for the website. And then Spaza doing highlight videos and a couple of other uh, extra things for the tournament there as the highlighter was very much appreciated. And that is finally going to do it for us. Thank you to all the staff who helped make this tournament possible. It made it a, a huge success in my book. I'm very happy with how this turned up, tournament turned out. Thank you to everyone who played in this tournament. It does not happen. It does not get this competitive without people willing and wanting to play in a tournament of this scale to dedicate their time week after week to a tournament like this. And thank you to everyone who watched all of the streams each weekend. We very much appreciate all the viewership that you've been giving, all the attention that this tournament has had. It has made it a very rewarding experience to know that people really do look for tournaments like this to bring quality production and experiences to both uh, the viewers and the players. We're, we're very, very excited to bring you a second iteration of the Perennial next year. Thank you all very much for watching. Thank you all very much for playing and thank you for helping me execute this tournament alongside my fellow organizers. My name is Dio. I've been the host of the Perennial and I'll see you next year. Thank mm -hmm. you.